All right, first and foremost, we want to give call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. That's all praises to the Most High God. And the name is only the God's Son, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We are the Sakari sect, coming from coming out of Chicago, coming to preach the gospel to you blacks, Latins, and Native Americans, right? And to also prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom, Babylon, aka well, Mystery Babylon, aka America. Um, let's get Romans the tenth chapter, and we're going to go into the Romans tenth chapter breakdown because. Um, you know, we're out here to cast, what do they say, uh, cast down strongholds, right? Well, uh, a, a major stronghold and a major doctrine in the Christian church that when they come to um, the New Testament is that now Israel has been done away with and their salvation is now open until everybody. You know, they're on some, um, a universalist ideology. Basically, everybody's a damn Catholic. You know, Catholic means universal. Everybody can come in now. Well, the Bible doesn't teach that. So what people need to understand is when Paul is going to that audience that he's speaking to, to those so-called Gentiles, they're Israelites, right? And through the precepts do we get understanding. So we're gonna go into, we're gonna go into Romans 10 to know what I'm saying, bring that out. Go ahead. Verse one. Go ahead, verse one. Romans 10 verse one. Uh-huh. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Bre God. The first word you hear is brethren, right? Brethren. Paul is talking to his people, okay? No matter what they're calling themselves, these are his brethren, okay? The same way when we come out here and somebody doesn't know their nationality, they're calling themselves an African-American, they're still my brother. Just because they're not claiming that they're an Israelite, that does not, not make them my kinsmen, okay? Read. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For Israel, that they might be saved. It didn't say the whole world, did it? It said Israel. Okay, if this was all talking about heathens, you know, it would have said, you know, well, I, I pray that, you know what I'm saying, um, the Egyptians be saved. I pray that the Ammonites be saved. I pray that the Edomites be saved. It don't say that. He said he prayed for Israel to be saved, right? And, and also, another thing that you got to understand, Paul was dealing with not only um, Israelite foreigners that were called Gentiles. First, he went to who? The Jews. Paul is a Jew. And the Jews didn't accept him. You know why they didn't accept him? Because Paul, when his name was Saul, before he had he had got his conversion and he fell off the horse and, and got the teachings and understandings from Yahweh Shai, he was around killing niggas that was believing in Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so when he came back, then now you're out here preaching about the same guy you was just killing us for believing in. They wasn't trying to hear that. It's like, dude, get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you crazy, right? So. You got to understand that you had Jews at this time that did know who they were, but they wasn't following the law, statutes, and commandments. They was rather following the traditions of men. Like um, when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, the elders or the, the scribes and the Pharisees told him, hey, man, you got to wash your hands before you eat bread. That's not in the law. That's the custom of a man, right? Matter of fact, we're going to get there. Um, give me um, Romans 3 and 1. We're going to get that in a second. But we're going to just make the premise that his whole audience is Israelites, okay? Give me Romans 3 and 1. Romans 3 and 1. Uh-huh. What advantage then hath the Jew? Hath the who? Hath the Jew. What is a Jew? An Israelite. Read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Of circumcision, right. Give me verse 2. Much every way. Chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Who was the oracles of God given to? Only the Israelites, man. Okay? Give me uh, Matthew 15 and 1. So, we got, we in this setting, we have Jews who know that they're Jews, but they're not following after law, statutes, and commandments. They're rather following after, you know what I'm saying, the traditions of men. Let's see what these traditions of men are. Go ahead. Matthew 15 and 1. Uh huh. Then came Yahweh Shai. Uh huh. Scribe. You know what? Read it as it's written. Then came to Jesus. Uh huh. Scribes and Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees. Read. Which were of Jerusalem. Uh huh. Saying, Why do thy disciples transgress? Why do the disciples transgress? They're saying that God-fearing man transgressed. Why? Because the disciples were keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. They wasn't trying to hear the traditions of men. 
but the scribes and the Pharisees were teaching people to keep their traditions as if they was law. Okay, read. Transgress the tradition of the elders. See, the tradition of the elders. That's the leaven of the Pharisees, man. Okay, go ahead. For they wash not their hands. For they wash not their hands. Read. When they eat bread. When they eat bread. Now, somebody take me to the law and show me where it says you're in transgression if you don't wash your hands before you eat. I'm not saying you can't be clean and, you know, not wash your hands, but that's not a law, man. You're not going to be put to death. There's no penalty for me not washing my hands before I go eat my corned beef sandwich, man. Okay? Three. Matter of fact, no. No, 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 no. Wait. Yeah, give, give me 15 and 3. But he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God? So they talking about why do you transgress why do you transgress the traditions of the elders? Yahweh Shai comes back and says, Why are you transgressing the laws of God, man? Okay? Free. By your traditions. By your traditions. By doing what the hell you want to do, man. Free. Verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and mother. Free. And he that curses father or mother, uh -huh. let him die the death. Go ahead. But ye say, whosoever shall to his father or his mother, uh -huh. it is a gift. God, that's what you said. You to that but whatsoever you thou mightest be, pro be profited by me. Uh huh. So what, what, what does the law say? You honor your father and your mother. You, you prolong your life, right? Okay. Read. Read the seven. And honor not his father or his mother. Mm -hmm. He shall be free. Uh huh. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Right, go ahead. Verse 7, ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, Go ahead. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. And honor me with their lips. So, basically... He's calling them hypocrites because they're not practicing what they're preaching. They're telling you, you know what I'm saying, that you got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You can't commit adultery. You can't eat pork. But the whole time, they, they're they looking apart, the but they're not playing. Right? You know what I'm saying? Um, they like to be seen of men. Right? And we're going to go into that. Right? So, when it comes down to um, you preaching this word, we got to walk it like we talk it, right? I can't come out and tell a brother, you know, hey, you shouldn't be smoking cigarettes while I'm in front of his face. Then I turn the corner and go flame up a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is anybody going to listen to me? How is anybody going to take me serious? They're not. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm being a damn hypocrite. You know? And that's what the, the, the certain scribes and Pharisees were doing of that time. Now, there's a, mis that there's a major misconception that all scribes and Pharisees are wicked or bad. No, it was just certain ones, okay? All right? It's not all the scribes and Pharisees that are bad, okay? Caiaphas was not a wicked person. You know what I'm saying? Lazarus, I think he was a scribe or a Pharisee, something like that. He was not a wicked person, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, bring that out. Start from 7 again, and then bring out 8. Uh, Matthew 15 and 7. Uh-huh. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, say. Uh -huh, so, this, so, so he's taking it back to Isaiah, right? Isaiah is an Israelite, right? And Isaiah was speaking to the Israelites as well, right? Read. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, uh -huh. and honoreth me with their lips. And honoreth me with their lips, right? Read. But their heart is far from me. But their heart is far from me, right? You know, I'm, I'm preaching to other people to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, but I'm not doing it myself. That's how your heart is far from the most high, right? But in vain they do worship me. But in vain they do worship me, right? Read. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The commandments of men, right? So basically, the Pharise the scribes and Pharisees of that time, they were, you know what I'm saying, doing a lot of things that were off. Just like when they tried to um get get, get the woman killed. Talking about uh she was she was committing adultery, we need to stone her. And what do you how was I say? Well, whoever, you know what I'm saying, has not sinned on them cast the first stone. Could nobody cast the stone because they were sinners as well. So you can understand. You know? And, and if it was left up to the law that they were trying to upkeep, 
a lot of the sins that we've all committed, we're supposed to be put to death, man. If you don't keep the Sabbath, no matter if you knew when it was or not, you're supposed to die, right? If, if people are claiming that we're under the law, yes, we're under grace, but you still have to keep the law, okay? That's what people need to understand. The Christian church don't teach this. The Christian church teaches all the laws done away with. When your house shines on the cross, well, when Jesus was on the cross and he said everything is finished, that means the law was done away with, and that's a bunch of nonsense and madness, man. Okay? That's pure D madness. All right? Uh, let's see, where was he at? Where was you at? That was uh, Matthew 14. That was Matthew 14. Give me Matthew 23 and 1. Chapter 23, verse 1. Read. Then spake Yahweh Shai uh -huh. to the no. multitude. Read it as it's written. Then spake Jesus to the multitude uh -huh. and to his disciples. Uh -huh. Read. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes and Pharisees. Read. Sit in Moses' seat. Moses' seat. What did Moses do? Moses was a leader, was he not? He led Israel, right? So, the, so Moses' seat represents leadership, okay? And that was the role of the scribes and Pharisees, man. Okay? They was the governors over the body of Israel at that time, right? So let's so so let's get an example of what they should have been doing and how they should have been moving, right? Just like Moses was. Give me um Deuteronomy 9 and 13. And we're gonna read to about mm, I tell you when to stop. Deuteronomy 9 and 13. Go ahead and go when you there. Deuteronomy 9 and 13. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Furthermore, Yahweh spake unto me, saying, Uh-huh. I have seen this people. I have seen this people talking about the Israelites. Read. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. It is a stiff-necked people, man. We stubborn as hell, man. We don't never want to listen to nothing. Right? We got the answers. Right? We want to tell you, you know, the person that made us, how we supposed to move, right? We're going to tell God what the hell to do, right? He, he must know how to answer because we want to listen to our damn self, right? Stiff-necked and dumb, man. Okay? Read. Verse 14. Go ahead. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name. Let me alone that I might destroy them. Yahweh, the Most High God, wanted to destroy Israel, man, for their stiff-neckedness, man. He got tired of dealing us with us, man. We was being a bunch of niggas, man. Okay? So you can understand. All right? Read. From under heaven. Uh-huh. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So basically, what the Most High is telling Moses is, hey, man, I'm, do I'm through dealing with these niggas. I'm finna kill all them off, and I'm just gonna start over with you. So basically... If this would have happened, the whole tribe of the, all 12 tribes of Israel, there would be no 12 tribes. It would just be Levites left because he was going to start with Moses, okay? Yeah. Read. Verse 15. So I turned and came down from the mount. Uh-huh. And the mount burned with fire, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. Uh-huh. Read. And I looked, and behold... He had sinned against Yahweh. He had sinned against Yahweh. Who had sinned against Yahweh? Who was his audience? The Israelites, right? You blacks, Latins, and Native Americans of today. Read. Your God, and had made you a molten calf. And had made you a molten calf, right? We transgressed the law. Was we supposed to be um, making any idols? That, that's, that's, that, that, that's idolatry, man. Okay? We were told specifically not to do that, and then we did it anyway. As soon as Moses left, we told we, we told Aaron, hey, we wanted a God that we could see. You know what I'm saying? What, is, what does the scripture say about us? We seek a sign. We want something we can see, right? And they also caused us a, a wicked generation, man, a generation of vipers, right? You know? Go ahead. Ye turned aside quickly out of the way. You turned your side away. You, you turned out of the way of the commandments, right? Read. Which Yahweh had commanded you. What verse you at? Uh, 16. All right, go ahead. And I took the two tables uh -huh. and cast them out of my two hands. Right. And break them before your eyes. So those are the tablets of stone that the, that the Ten Commandments was written on, right? Read. And 
I fell down before Yahweh, uh -huh. as at the first, forty days and forty nights, uh -huh. and did neither eat bread nor drink water. So he's fasting, man. Okay. Read. Because of all your sins. Because of all your sins, right? Read. Which ye have sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of Yahweh. Uh huh. To provoke him to anger. To provoke him to anger, right? So, so now Moses is fasting, man. We we can even see this in uh in Judges, right? Every time, um, basically Yahweh will send us into captivity, then we'll want to get right. So then everybody will fast, and then we go cry to the Most High. Then he hear us. Then he takes us out of captivity. And then after he takes us out of captivity, just like a nigga, we start doing what the hell we want to do again. So then he has to put us back into captivity, right? But the thing about it is, fasting and prayer is how, you know what I'm saying, the most high hears, you know what I'm saying, the righteous, um, your, your, it's how he answers the righteous, man, okay? Through fasting and much prayer do you get rid of a lot of demons, you know what I'm saying? Through fasting and much prayer, you know what I'm saying, a lot of good to, will come to you in your life, man, okay? Um, and, and also fasting and praying, it, it, it clears a lot of distractions, man. And Moses had to be on point to be able to deal with us, man, okay? We was the reason, we, we, we pissed him off so bad, we was the reason why he couldn't even see the promised land, man. Okay, it was because of us and our folly. Okay, read. Verse 19. Uh -huh. For I was afraid of the anger and what displeasure wherewith Yahweh was wrought against you. So he knew that, man, Yahweh's not gonna take this, man. The Most High's not gonna stand for this. Moses knew this, man. Okay, read. To destroy you. To destroy you, man. Read. But Yahweh hearkened unto me. But Yahweh hearkened unto Moses, man. He listened to Moses, right? Read. At that time also. Uh huh. Verse 20. And Yahweh was very angry with Aaron to destroy him, and I prayed for Aaron also the same time. Right. So basically, you see Moses, he's in a leadership position. The Most High wanted to kill us off. He said, hey, nah, man. Don't even do that. You know what I'm saying? He also prayed for his brother Aaron, man. Okay? The way that Moses is moving is the same way the Pharisees should have been moving. Nowhere in the, in the New Testament do you see, oh, the Pharisees know the Most High is mad. Oh, now, he's, now they're fasting and praying. No, man. They wasn't dealing with the Most High, man. They weren't worried about the Most High. They was worried about them damn selves. Okay. Let's um. Let's get back to uh. Skip to Deuteronomy nine and twenty six. Chapter 9, verse 26. Uh huh. I prayed therefore unto Yahweh uh -huh. and said, O Yahweh, God, destroy not thy people. Destroy not thy people, read. And thine inheritance, uh -huh. which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness. The Most High's inheritance is what? Israel, right? Read. Which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt. Right. Okay, now, give me Matthew 23 and 3, right? So, as we can see, the Pharisees was not moving in the way that Moses was moving, man. They should have been, but they wasn't, okay? But they sit in Moses' seat. So, this is why Yahawashai is about to tell the people what he tells them. Read. <clears throat> Matthew 23 and 3. Uh-huh. All therefore... Whatsoever they bid you observe. Whatever the Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees tell you to do according to the law, do it, man. Observe it, right? Read. That observe and do. Uh-huh. But do not ye after their works. But do not ye after their works, right? Because like like because Yahweh already knew. They're not practicing what they preach. So yeah, if they tell you not to eat pork, you don't do it. Know what I'm saying? But when you see them going off and doing wickedness, don't think that you're supposed to follow after them, man. Okay? Give me um Romans 13 to 1. 
because at the end of the day, you still got to honor your leadership, man. You know, if, if somebody is ordained, you know what I'm saying, by the Most High, you know what I'm saying, if he, give, if, he, if he gives them that slot, you're supposed to listen to him, you know what I'm saying? As long as it doesn't, as long as you're not listening to anything that goes against the Most High, right? Three. Romans 13 and 1. Uh huh. Let every soul, let every soul, read, be subject unto the higher power. Be subject unto the higher power, right? Read. For there is no power but of God. Uh huh. So whoever God sets up to be over you, that's who you listen to, man. Okay? I know some other Israelites use this verse to say, oh, now we got to listen to the white man, obey the laws of the land. That's not what this is talking about, okay? The leadership that this is referring to is talking about the governing body of Israel, okay? The white man does not govern the body of Israel. And I can give a damn about the law of the land because the law of the land is contrary to the laws of the Most High, man. The law of the land tells you you can be, you can be a homosexual. The law of the land can tell you, you know what I'm saying, you can eat whatever the hell you want, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, man. Okay? Laws of the land tells you you can go deal with any, any hermetic woman that you want to. But in Deuteronomy chapter 7, it tells us in the law not to deal with no damn Hamites, man. Not to mingle with them, not to have, you know what I'm saying, any marriages with them, okay? Right? So to hell with the laws of the land, man. We're going to follow the laws of the Most High, okay? Drop that. Give me, um, give me Hebrews 13 and 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Uh huh. Obey them that have the rule over you. Obey them that have the rule over you, right? Which was the scribes and Pharisees at that time to the Israelites, right? Read. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul. For they watch for your soul. That's what they're supposed to be doing, man. They, they, they the watchmen that set up over you, man. Read. As they that must give account. Uh huh. That they. That they may do it with joy. Right. And not with grief. And not with grief. Right? Drop that. Give me a uh, Matthew 23 and 4. So the watchmen over Israel at that time were the scribes and the Pharisees. And they were supposed to be watching over the flock. But instead of watching over the flock to see if they was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, they just wanted the flock to basically cater to them. Cater to what the hell they felt should have been going on. Instead of what the most high program was, right? Read. Matthew 23 and 4. Mm -hmm. For they bind heavy burdens. They bind heavy burdens. Let's talk about the scribes and the Pharisees. Read. And grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. And lay them on men's shoulders. Read. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So basically, they're telling you, you know what I'm saying, to um, keep all these laws, statutes, and commandments, but they're not going to lift their finger to do one of them, man. Okay, they're not leading by example. Read. Uh, verse 5. But uh, no, 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 no. Skip, skip. Give me uh, Matthew 23 and 15. Skip to 15. Uh, Matthew 23 15. Uh-huh. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. Read. Scribes and Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees, you leaders. Go ahead. Hypocrites. Hypocrites, right? Read. For ye come past sea and land to make one proselyte. So basically, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you traveling this large landmass to go bring somebody in. A proselyte is a newcomer into the truth, right? Read. And when he is made. And when he is made, when he comes into the truth, what? They ye, make him what? Ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. More child of hell than yourself, man. Because basically you got him following after you and you're not even following the most high. Okay? Skip that. Drop that. Give me, um... Oh, go to 6. Go to 6. Matthew 23 and 6. Mm -hmm. And love the utmost, uppermost rooms at feast. They love the uppermost rooms at feast. Read. And the chief seats in the synagogue. And the chief seats. Go ahead. Uh, that, was that was it on that. So basically, that's going into how, you know what I'm saying, basically everything they do, they want to be seen of men. They want the best seats. They want the best garments. You know, they're, 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 they're enlarging the, uh, the, the borders of their garments. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, they're looking, in, 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 they're looking like, you know what I'm saying, chief men of God, but they're not, they're, their actions don't um, convey that, man. 
Okay? You got to do more than just look the part, man. Give me um Maccabee, second Maccabee 6 and 1. This is another thing that you got to understand. A lot of the people don't realize that in the New Testament, the uh, Colossians, the Corinthians, that all these people are Israelites because they don't understand the Hellenization that we went through, you know what I'm saying, in the time of Maccabees, right? And and, and I really think this is why they, they took out, you know what I'm saying, the Apocrypha, you know what I'm saying, to have people all messed up in the head to open up this, this, this Roman Catholic universal doctrine that now Israel is done away with and now, oh, the, the, the word is to be preached to the Romans and the Greeks. Those Roman and those Greeks, those are Israelites, man. Okay? But you need to understand the Hellenization that happened to our people, so we're going to go into that. Read that. Second Maccabees 6 and 1. Uh-huh. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens. An old man of Athens. Where's Athens at? That's in Greece, man. Read. To compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers. To compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers, right? So it was it was unlawful for you to keep the law, okay? Read. And not to live after the laws of God. Not to live after the laws of God, read. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus. So basically, you know, do away with everything the Most High told you to do and basically follow the Roman and Greek way, man. Okay, read. And that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, uh -huh. as they did desire that dwelt in the place. Go ahead. Uh, verse 3. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. And because they knew they shouldn't have been doing this stuff, man. But hey, what you gonna do? It's just like, you know what I'm saying? If um, let me let me just modernize it for you, right? If if it's a block full of GDs, right? I'm speaking in Chicago Chicago slang. If it's a block full of GDs and some BDs want to take over the block, they come on the block and it's more of them than the GDs, and they got the ups on them, and they say, you know what, man? Hey, man, forget what y'all got going on. Y'all finna flip. Y'all finna become us or y'all gonna die. You right. know what I'm saying? Basically, you're gonna get down or lay down. This is the same thing that's happening right here, man. Okay? The Greeks wasn't trying to hear that, oh, I'm an Israelite stuff. Okay? Nigga, you gonna do what we tell you to do. You gonna live how we live. You gonna do what we do, eat what we eat, or we gonna put you to death, man. Okay? So a lot of our people took on those Greek and Roman customs to escape death. Okay? So you can understand. Go ahead. <clears throat> For the temple was filled with riot and reveling uh -huh. by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots. By the Gentiles that dallied with harlots, man. This is actually talking about heathens, okay? This is before we was called Gentiles. This is how we became Gentiles, okay? What did Paul say? We was led, we was led uh, unto dumb idols, man. Those dumb idols was putting Jupiter up in the temple and all that stuff, man, that he was just going into, right? Read and had to do with women uh -huh. within the circuit of the holy places. These niggas was having sex in the temple, man. Show on, Bob. You know, they was dallying with harlots in the, in, 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 in the place of God, man. Okay? Free. And had to do with women within the circuit uh -huh. of the holy places. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. Right. Um, let me just get the point. Skip down. Verse six. Go ahead, read. Verse, yeah, six. Give me that. Verse 6. Neither was it lawful. Neither was it lawful. Read. For a man to keep Sabbath days. For a man to keep Sabbath days, right? So you, you can't even keep the Sabbath now. You know, they, they doing away with all that, man. Read. Or ancient feasts. Or the ancient feasts. You, you couldn't keep none of the feast days. What? Blowing of the trumpets, tabernacles. Do away with all that, right? Read. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You couldn't call yourself a Jew. Or they was going to cut your damn head off. So, so, so what did they do? They started complying and calling themselves Greeks. Okay? And these same Greeks 
and Roman, these Israelites that are living after Greek and Roman customs with a Roman's mindset, these are the Gentiles that Paul is going to within the New Testament, man. Okay? It, 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 there, there, there's nowhere in the New Testament where Paul is actually going to a heathen Gentile, man. They're Israelite foreigners, okay? People that didn't grow up within the way, just like us in America. I didn't know who the hell I was at first. I didn't grow up in the truth. I was calling myself an African American, and I was doing as Americans do until I found the truth. It's the same thing that's that history is repeating itself, man. Okay? Drop that. Give me um. Give me first back bees one and ten. First Maccabees, read to 11. chapter 1, verse 10. Because this is another demographic of Israelites, you know what I'm saying, that you have to deal with. It was certain Israelites that just got down and laid down because they didn't want to be put to death, right? But then you had other Israelites that were just wicked as hell, wasn't, wasn't worried about death. They just wanted to get down with the heathen, right? We're going to read about it. Read. Uh, first Maccabees 1, verse 10. Uh-huh. And there came out of them a wicked root. Uh-huh. Antiosus, surnamed Epiphanes, uh -huh. son of Antio Antiosus the king, who had been in hostage at Rome, and had, and he reigned in the hundred and third thirty, the hundred and thirty and seventh year uh -huh. of the kingdom of the Greeks. Right. Go ahead. Verse eleven is the point. In those days. In those days, read. When they're out. It of Israel went there out of Israel read wicked men wicked men read who persuaded many saying who persuaded many go ahead let us go and make a covenant with the heathen let us go and make the covenant of the heathen it didn't say they were forced to do it it didn't say they put a gun to their head they put a sword to them no they just said hey man we want to go get down with them you know they want to they, they basically wanted to assimilate into their culture, man. They wanted to integrate with them. Integrate with the heathen. You know? Stop circumcising your kids. Stop keeping the Sabbath. You know? Eat all types of, sacrifice all type of pork on the altar to the Most High. You know, all types of manners of wickedness that we learn from the nations. That's why the Most High didn't even want us dealing with the nations, man. Okay? He, the Most High is a separatist. Okay? He's not a universalist. He's a separatist, man. Okay? He separated the people by the bounds of who? Of Israel. He kept he kept the best portions of the land for us. Okay? And even within the kingdom, you know what I'm saying, after these nations serve slavery, what are we going to do? Outside of the white man, because he's going to be utterly destroyed. But outside of the Edomites, what are we going to do? We're going to send the other nations back into their land, amongst their people. And they're going to learn how to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. We'll still be reigning over them, but there will be excluded to themselves, okay? The Most High is not about all nations coming together and being together, man, okay? He never was. That's why he was only dealing with the Israelites, okay? He doesn't have, you know what I'm saying, another chosen people, all right? So you can understand that. Where was you at? You was in Maccabee, right? Give me Romans, or get back to Romans 10 and give me verse 10. Huh? Y'all not filming now, are you? No, we filming, but you can still walk back. I don't want nobody to see me. What's up, boys? Romans 10 and where? 10 and 2. 2. 2, 3. Romans chapter 10 verse 2. Uh -huh. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So this is the audience that Paul is, 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 is addressing, right? For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, right? So yeah, we are the church. Yeah, we are the church. See what this is. We got to say. But go ahead, bring that out again. Romans chapter ten, verse two. Uh huh. 
For I bear them record. For I bear them record. Read. That they have a zeal of God, uh -huh. but not according to knowledge. Give me verse 3. For being ignorant of God's righteousness, uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness. Going about to establish their own righteousness, right? Going to do whatever the hell they wanted to do instead of what God said. Read. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Uh-huh. Give me Galatians 2 and 16. So basically, what the scribes and Pharisees were telling people to do at that time was basically what our ancestors did way back when we was uh, in, in the times of Moses. They were basically keeping the law, and they thought keeping the law made them perfect. It was going to give them salvation. But you need faith and works. You need to believe on Yahweh Shai, who the world angrily calls Jesus, right? For you to have for, for you to have salvation, man. You can't just be keeping the law. You said Romans 10 verse 2. That was Romans 10 and 2 through 3. Can you go back again? All right, read it again. Verse 2. Romans chapter 10 verse 2. Uh-huh. For I bear them record. For I bear them record. Read. That they have a zeal of God. We have a zeal for God. Read. But not according to knowledge. But not according to knowledge. That's why a lot of times when you see, who, who do you always see in the Christian church? A black, a Latin, you know what I'm saying, or Hispanic, right? They got, they're giving all their money to the church. You know what I'm saying? They're doing whatever they can do for the church. But the church ain't teaching them jack. They read one scripture and then they go, and then the rest of it is just like a damn clown show, right? But why do we have that much zeal for the most high? Can high? I read? I don't know what you said on my life. Can you who? Can I read what you said on my life verse two? What version is that? Is that King James? That's the New International Version. That's the New, that's the NIV. Well, what does it say, sister? It says, King verse 2, For I can testify about them that they are jealous. God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Right, their zeal is not based on knowledge. What is the knowledge? The law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. When you're ignorant, that means you don't know it. Okay, go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness. I'm going to go do what the hell I want to do. Not what God said do, but what I want to do. I'm going to follow after my own heart. Read have not submitted themselves have not submitted themselves read unto the righteousness of god unto the most high give me galatians 2 and 16. god galatians chapter 2 verse 16 read knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law you're not justified by just the works of the law man that's what they were doing. They were just basically, oh, I'm just going to keep the law, but I'm not going to believe on Yahweh Shai. I'm not going to believe on Jesus. I'm just, I'm just going to keep the law. You know, faith without works is dead, man. Okay, but you need both. Okay, cohesively. They, they both work cohesively. You need faith and works. Right, go ahead. But by faith of Yahweh Shai. But by faith of who? Yahweh Shai. Read it as it's written, though. Uh but everybody, by faith, every, everybody don't know who, G, who, who your house I is. Right. So, so read, read it that way. But, but just, by faith of Jesus Christ. Okay, go ahead. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ uh -huh. that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Justified by what? By the faith of Christ. By the faith of Christ. Not by just you keeping the works, man. You got to keep, you got to keep the faith. You got to have faith and you keep the works, okay? Go ahead. And not by the works of the law. And not by the works of the law. Read. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Shall no flesh be justified. Because if you were under the law, as soon as you broke a law that was a sin under death, you get put to death and that's it. And we've all committed sins unto death. We're supposed to be dropping dead for committing adultery. We're supposed to be dropping dead for not keeping the Sabbath day. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Any other sin that was a sin unto death. It's, it's people out here being... Uh, homosexuals, you know what I'm saying, lesbians, and, um, I, I don't want to say the F word, you know, uh, you know, men, men with men, you know what I'm saying, basically, and that's an abomination. What's up, brother? So, uh, so what, you good? Good. Good? Okay. 
Go ahead. Uh, slot. But if. Verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, uh -huh. we ourselves also are found sinners. We ourselves are also found sinners, right? Read. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Read. God forbid. God forbid, right? So, 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 when the, when the Christian church teaches you, oh, you don't have to keep the law anymore, that's a bunch of bull crap, man. You got to keep the law, okay? Yeah, we're under grace, but what is grace? A grace is a second chance for you to get it right, okay? So you just won't be put to death right then and there as we was being put to death back in the day. I mean, they killed the man for what? Picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. You know, they saw that as work. You're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. You know? So, the, by the grace of Yahweh Shai, can't nobody just sit up here and put you to death for the folly that you're committing right now. You know what I'm saying? So, use this second chance to get it right, man. Okay? What was that? That was uh, Galatians. Give me James 2 and 18. James, chapter... Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. You had a question, did you? Um, I was going to say uh, something about the Matthew 18 and 11, because I'm not sure if she's Oh, uh, well. Oh. Well, James, we'll go, go ahead. ahead. Uh -huh. What's your question? Speak up, I, speak up. Okay, when I was looking at the different pictures of what the Israelites look like, and I saw pictures of them having nose rings, I say, what does the nose ring stand for in those pictures? It doesn't stand for anything. I mean, it, it, it's not bad for you to have a nose ring. You know, we, we, we started that. We started it? Yeah, we started that. It, it, nose rings are lawful. There, there, there's nowhere in the Bible that says you can't have a nose ring. So you say, you say, say, certain pierces, we started it. We started having no we, we started the whole that's our culture nose rings and you don't have to have one but it's not unlawful for you to have a nose ring right. if, if you if you if you see an ancient depiction of an israelite and he has on a nose ring you know what i'm saying that's evidence that what it's one of our customs just like the same way you can look on the walls and see israelites that have fringes on their um that have these or on the bottom of their garments just yeah. like you can look on the walls and see you got israelites with braids okay. israelites with afros yeah, I, yeah, I've been seeing, lo I've been seeing lots of pictures of those lately. Uh huh. Yes, it's braids, afros. I even seen pictures of, I even seen pictures of Mexicans with long hair. Mm hmm. Such, such look like I say much. Not much has changed. Only difference is we're the same people, just different tribes. Right. Yeah. yeah we, 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 and we all, and we've always been different tribes. Okay. It's always been twelve tribes of Israel. You know, it's just through, you know, uh, the, uh us, us migrating and having, you know what I'm saying, um mixtures, you know what I'm saying, with different with different nations, we're, our, our look is going to vary. Yeah. You know? I know? But, like I told you last time, you know, no matter what Israelite man has a child with any woman of any nation, that child is still a what? An Israelite. There we go. That's all you got to understand. So we're all going to look different. We all different shades of brown. You know, we all got different, di di different uh, shades of melanin. But at the end of the day, if your father's an Israelite, you're an Israelite, right? Yeah, yeah come, 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 come. Different yeah. textures of hair. Certain Israelites got straight hair. Certain Israelites, you know what I'm saying, got no. long hair, short hair, short you know. Short hair, afros. Right. Teach your class. Not everyone can accept. So, that was it, though? Yeah, because yeah, I, I started looking at it and seeing it, and I said, wow. We, we, are, we all are the same people, just we come from different nations and different tribes. Well, we're we not, no, no, we're just one nation, but it's just nation. different tribes. Different one, tribes. Just one nation, different tribes within that one nation. Right, 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 right. There you go. Different tribes within that one nation. Right? All right, so give me that in James 2 and 18. Huh? I can't, I, I can't step off. Well, Yeah, the, see, that's that NIV, man. They took certain scriptures out of that. We need to get her um, a KJV, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to get her a KJV. Um, hmm. KJV. I got one. Yeah, you got one? Yeah, somebody let her use y'all Bible. 
from kids and, and giving yeah, back as well. Back. Thank you, Rose. I'm not going to interrupt no more. Well, that's, that's one of them that, that ain't, that just got the New Testament in it. No, that's Old Testament and New Testament. Oh, okay. Testament. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, the NIV isn't, isn't bad, per se, because, I mean, we you we, 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 we do compare this. Huh? We read the Old Testament. We read, the, we read, we read from Generations, uh, Genesis to Revelation. So the whole book. I've seen Jeff That's right. That's right. So go ahead. Uh, what's that you owe James? James two sixteen. James two and no, James two and eighteen. James two and eighteen. James two and eighteen. Uh huh. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. That I have. Wait, wait, read it again. A man. Yea, a man may say. A man may say. Read. Thou hast faith. And I have works. Thou hast faith, and I have works. All right, go ahead. Show me thy faith without thy works. Show me thy faith without thy works. Go ahead. And I will show thee my faith by my works. I will show you my faith by my works. Right. Thank so you gotta have that faith and that works, right? Because that faith without works is there. Exactly, sister. Exactly. <laughs> Give me twenty. You got twenty. Give me twenty. But wilt thou know, O vain man? Uh huh. O vain man, read. That faith without work is dead. Faith without works is dead. So what the scribes and the Pharisees were doing at the time, they were only keeping the law. They wasn't believing on who, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, right? They were just doing whatever the hell they wanted to do. And, and right, you know what I'm saying? They were just keeping their own customs and their own traditions, right? So basically, they was worshiping the Most High in, in, in a bunch of vanity, man. It profited them nothing, okay? And they was teaching other people to do the same. Right? Give me Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. See, and, and this is another thing that you got to understand. That the same people that we were back then, we're the same spirit regenerated, man. We're back on the scene now, doing the same thing. You have certain people that believe in the Messiah. You have certain people that don't believe in the Messiah. Right? You got wicked Israelites. You got righteous Israelites. Yeah. You always had the one-third and the two-third on the scene. Okay? Yeah. Give me Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. We're going to prove that regeneration or reincarnation is within the Bible and it's true. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Give me that. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. Uh-huh. The thing that hath been. The thing that have been. Read past tense, right? Read. It is that which shall be. It is that which shall be. Read. And that which is done. That which is done. Read. Is that which shall be done. Is that which shall be done, right? And there is no new thing under the sun. There is no thing. There is no new thing under the sun. What's under the sun? Is the earth not under the sun? The earth is under the sun, right? Right. So that's talking about the souls, man. The souls that dwell on the earth, right? There's right. There, there's no new soul that's here. You're probably in a new body, but you've been here before. What do our people tell our people all the time? We are our ancestors, right? We are our ancestors. That's true. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. No problem, sister. Hey, somebody walk across the street. All right, go ahead. Give me that Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. Thank you. No problem, sister. No problem. You got a fly. I got a fly. Did you get the fly? One second, Ock. We got a fly for. Her. Go give her a fly. All right, give me that Ecclesiastes three and fifteen. Then hold Ecclesiastes four and fifteen. Ecclesiastes three and fifteen. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes three and fifteen. Uh huh. That which has been is now. That which has been is now. Read. And that which is to be. Has already been. Has already been, right? You've already been here, man. Okay? You're just a regenerated spirit sent back into another body, man. Read. And God requireth that which is past. God requireth that which is past. 
that's why within your life you're going to go through certain things and it could be coming to you in, 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 a, in a time of your life where you're not even let's say you calm down it's been it's been times in my life where i say well man i don't understand why this happened to me i haven't even been gang banging or you know i haven't even been smoking or you know what i'm saying but nine times out of ten it's something that i didn't pay for in, in my other life that i have to be paid for now okay yeah. god requires what which is past okay yeah. if you didn't pay for it in your other life you'll pay for it in the next okay give me ecclesiastes 4 and 15. Ecclesiastes 4 and 15. Uh -huh. I considered all the living. I considered all the living. Go ahead. Which walk under the sun. Which walk under the sun, right? Read. With the second child that shall stand up in his stead. With the second child that, that shall stand up in his stead. Go ahead. Verse 16. There is no end of all the people. There is no end of all the people. So if there's no end of all the people, that can only that you can only surmise that you are the same people that were here aforetime, man. Okay, read. Even of all that have been before them, mm -hmm. they also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Uh huh. Surely this is also vanity and vexation, vexation of, spirit. of spirit. Right. You know what I'm saying. I dropped that. So basically, you always had. The two-third Israelites and the one-third Israelites, the house of Saul and the house of David, we've always been on the scene. The one-third is going to believe on Yahweh Shai and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. The two-third are going to be cut off and die and have to be reborn in the kingdom, okay, through the loins of the elect, okay? Starting with the 144,000, and then you have the one-third, the rest of the one-third, which is men, women, and children, okay? Um, and that's another thing. The word reincarnation, re means back, incarnation is in the flesh, okay? So, your soul is your soul is the same soul that's been here, but you just have new flesh, and, and, it, and it came back, so you can understand. Uh, give me Romans 10 and 4. Go ahead. What about them that pass now? They got to back in the first now? Well, it's to every third and fourth generation. Give me that in... Um, you get sent back every third and fourth generation. Is that a uh, Deuteronomy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, what you got there? Deuteronomy 23 and 8. Uh, the children that are begotten of them uh -huh. shall enter into the congregation of Yahweh uh -huh. in their third generation. In their third generation, right? Uh, nah, nah, I don't know. Where is that one? But basically, yeah, that's the time frame. Somebody dies, they come back within that third and fourth generation. They get sent back within that third and fourth generation. From Yisraela! From Yisraela! You know? Go, 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 go. All right, give me that back in Rome. Who y'all with? Sakari. Sakari? Go ahead, give me that Rome in center four. Romans chapter 10 verse 4. Uh-huh. For Christ is the end of the law. For Christ is the end of the law. That mean, that doesn't mean that the law is done away with. Let me tell you what that means. Christ has the final say of the law. Okay? So if the law, okay, prime example, right? It was a law put in place because of the hardness of our hearts that we could just put our wives away for anything that we wanted to in the times of Moses. But that wasn't so in the beginning. And when we go into the New Testament, we see that Christ say, hey, man, you can only divorce your wife for her committing fornication, man, for her laying with another laying with another man or woman. That's the only thing you can put away for. It's not like in the times of Moses where you can just say, hey, man, she being a damn demon, I, and you know what? Should we argue too much? Get the hell up out of here. I'm going to write you this bill. He'll go to hell on it. You can't do that, man. Okay? That was not the regular program, man.
Okay? You can walk through. Hey, step back so they can walk through. Go ahead. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. But all the Israelites didn't believe on Christ, man. And those same souls that didn't believe in Christ then, they don't believe in Christ now. What do we call them? Old Testament only Israelites. Oh, man, ain't no Messiah. Oh, when it's talking about Israel, when, when it's talking about somebody out of Israel, it's talking about somebody to come. He ain't came already. You know, oh, I'm the Messiah. You know, all, all this madness, man. You know? It's just it's just it's just hate for their brother, man, Yahweh Shot, man. Who's gonna lead the biggest slave revolt that you've ever seen? That's right! Okay. Go ahead, give me your Romans ten and five. Romans ten and five. Uh-huh. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. Which is of the law, right? We in the New Testament, right? God. Why in the hell are they mentioning the law? Pastor Porkchop told me that I don't have to keep it. Go ahead. That the man which doeth those things uh -huh. shall live by them. That the man that should, if, if, if you're telling somebody it, you should be doing it as well. Okay? Don't be a damn hypocrite. Okay? Like your Christian pastor. You know, that's, that's at the titty bar on, on, on Saturday and in church at 9 on Sunday smelling like booty and Hennessy. Okay? <laughs> Give me, um, let's see, uh, read that again, and then I'm going to get Exodus 12 and 36, because then we're going to see who the law was given to. Romans 10 and 4. Uh-huh. For Christ is the end of the law. For Christ is the end of the law. Read. Of the, of, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For everyone that believeth. Go ahead. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. Uh-huh. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So if you're telling people to keep the law, you got to be keeping it yourself, right? Go ahead and give me that next. Exodus what? Exodus 12 and 36. Oh, and that's another thing. We know the laws were given to Israel, but then somebody would go, oh, well, the mixed multitude was there too. Let's see what happened to the damn mixed multitude, okay? I'm sick of hearing about the damn mixed multitude, okay? Nobody cares about the mixed multitude, okay? The most high didn't care about them. Yes, it was Egyptians that came out of Egypt with, 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 with us when we sojourned up out of that place. But let's see what happened to them, man, okay? As soon as somebody say, oh, only the law was given to Israel, they want to bring up the mixed multitude. Let's see what the fate of the mixed multitude was. Go ahead, read that. Exodus 12 and 36. Uh-huh. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Uh-huh. He gave us favor in the sight of the Egyptians, right? The Israelites, read. So that they lent unto them such things as they required. Uh-huh. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And we spoiled them, right? Read. Give me seven. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, uh -huh. about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. Uh-huh. 38, and a mixed multitude. And a who? And a mixed multitude, right? That's what everybody want to make a big hoopla about, right? The mixed multitude. Go ahead, read. Went up also with them. Uh-huh. And flocks and herds, even very much cattle. Give me numbers. Give me numbers, the 11th chapter. Let's see what the fate of the mixed multitude was. Let's see if the most high care so much for the mixed multitude. I'm going to have you read the 4, and then you're going to skip the 32 so we can get the point. Uh -huh. Numbers 11, verse 1. Uh-huh. And when the people complained. And when the people did what? Complained. When the people complained. Just like we, we, when we was murmuring when, when we came out of Egypt talking about, oh, this nigga Moses trying to kill us, man. Where, where is he taking us to? Man, nigga, we hungry. You know? <coughs> and we had fish back in Egypt, right? We should go back there. You know, just like a bunch of niggas, man. Reach. <laughs> and when the people complain, uh -huh. it displeased Yahweh. It displeased the Most High, right? You murmuring. Go ahead. And Yahweh heard it, 
and his anger was kindled. And you kindled the anger, and we kindled the anger of the Most High. You know, I was just about to exclude y'all and say that y'all just did it, but my wicked ass was back there too. You know, yeah, we did it. We all were back there. Right, exactly. Go ahead. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of Yahweh burnt among them. Uh huh. And the fire of the, uh, Yahweh burnt among them. Read. And consumed them that were in utter in the uttermost parts of the camp. Uh huh. Go ahead. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto Yahweh, the fire was quenched. Uh huh. And he called the name of the place Tabira, because the fire of Yahweh burnt among them. Give me verse four. And the mixed multitude uh -huh. that was among them uh -huh. felt a lusting. Fell a lusting, right? Read. And the children of Israel uh -huh. also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Skip the 32. Verse 32. And the people stood up all that day. The people stood up all that day, read. And all that night. Uh huh. And all the next day, and they gathered quails. They gathered, they gathered stuff to eat, right? They was complaining about food. Most High's giving them food. Let's see what happens. He that gathered least gathered ten homers. Uh-huh. And they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. 33. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, Uh-huh. Here it was chewed. Uh-huh. The wrath of Yahweh was kindled against the people. Uh-huh. And Yahweh smote the people. And Yahweh did what? Smote the people. Don't tell me about no goddamn mixed multitude. The most I killed them, man. Okay? When he gave the laws, although they were in attendance, it wasn't for them. It was for the Israelites. Read that again, man. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, mm -hmm. here it was chewed, the wrath of Yahweh was kindled against the people, uh -huh. and Yahweh smote the people. Now, somebody may say, hey, man, he smote him with a plague. He gave him measles or something like that, right? Finish that out and give me the next exact verse so with we the, can prove that he killed them. Read. With the very great plague. Uh-huh. And what was that very great plague? Read the next verse. And he called the name of that place uh -huh. Kibrot Hatava. Uh-huh. Because there they buried the people that lust. They buried them. They were no more. Okay? So when somebody come, at with, come, come to y'all with that, oh, well, the mixed multitude was there when we got the law, they got the law too. But well, why did the Most High put them people to death, man? Most High didn't care about them people. He only cared about the Israelites. Okay? Let's get back to, um, get back to Romans. Let me, uh, Break out Romans 10 and 5 one more time, and then we're going to, matter of fact, give me 1 Corinthians 12. Right? Moses back then. Th think of Moses back then, like, say, uh, like Black Lives Matter. Or something like say. Well, Black Lives Matter is really headed by a bunch of lesbian, uh, gay people, you know what I'm saying, and, and they're not really for us, it's not really for us, it, 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 it's a hoax, man. How, how bad then is complaining about food, what do we do right now, we're complaining about the crime not being stopped and the police mm -hmm. body. Yeah, okay, I, I get what you're saying, I get what you're saying, what they should stand for, not what they actually stand for, yeah, what they should stand for. Yeah, it's because we were doing the same thing, we are doing the same thing then like we're doing now, uh -huh. only different. Right. Then it was food because they want, because oh, they just left Egypt. They complained about because they didn't have no food. They right, want to go right, back. Right. They complained about not having no food. And and right now, we just complained about, oh, yeah, the police is messing with us. That's uh -huh. all we complaining about right now. But not looking at the bigger picture of what we're doing to each other, but complaining about what the police is doing to us. Right, 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 right. I mean, but at the same token, the police aren't just, you know what I'm saying? Let's not give, let, let, let's not say they don't have a complaint. But like you said, they want to complain about what the police is doing to them, but they'll go kill their own brother. They'll yeah. go kill their own sister. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so it's like we're doing the same thing just in reverse. When you, when you, put, it, when you put the two together. Give me that clip. Huh. In the what? Uh, 10 and... Uh, no, 12 and 1. 12. 12 and 1 through 2. 
First Corinthians, chapter 12 and 1. Uh-huh. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, read. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you be unwise, ignorant, read. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. That ye were what? Were Gentiles. That ye were Gentiles, right? Read. Carried away unto these dumb idols. Carried away unto dumb idols. How did you become Gentiles? We read about the Hellenization period, right? Where basically you took on the customs of Greeks and Romans, man. That's how you became Gentiles. That's the how. That's how you became a Corinthian. That's how you became a, um, a th uh, 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 from the Church of Thessalonians. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, what's another church? Philadelphia. Uh, what else? Other churches in the in the, in the New Testament. Thessalonica, Corinth, um, Philippi, right. You know what I'm saying? That's how you became a Gentile. You was led away to those dumb idols, man. Who was led away unto dumb idols? The Israelites. Okay? Northern Kingdom did the same thing, too. Exactly. That, that was their major thing. Idols. Idolatry. Making groves. You know? That's where stripper poles come from. Did you know that? I think That's where the grove is. So, yeah, you, 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 you like going to the strip club a lot? Be honest. I, I I didn't go to clubs that much. I do, but not as much. But do you? But do you go to the strip club? I never. Truth be told, I've never been to a strip club. Okay. I seen it Stay away from it. <laughs> Stay away from it. Those poles it, it's wicked as hell. Like first of all, they got our women in there. The, who 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 are the majority of people that you see in strip clubs? Our women, right? Yeah. Shaking their ass. You know what I'm saying? No no respect for themselves. And you know what I'm saying? They keep running back to the strip club because we keep supporting it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if we wouldn't support and say, you know what, instead of going to the strip club, we're going to sit outside of the strip club and make it bad for business by bringing the Bible out there and telling these sisters, hey, y'all need to cover up and get the hell up out of there, then sisters maybe will stop running to the strip club. Because you got to understand something. What, what sisters perceive as good is what they know that we like. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, if, so, so, so if my girl... Let's say she goes on my Instagram, she sees my like photos, right? Yeah. Say she's a homebody. She's somebody that, you know what I'm saying, really don't go out that much. You know what I'm saying? She's a nerd or something like that, right? But she sees what I like. I'm, I'm liking a bunch of strippers, you know what I'm saying, and all this stuff. In her mind, she's going to say, well, I can do that. Let me go do that for my man. I want him looking at me, right? Yeah. So if we would stop perpetuating that we like those things, maybe the sisters would stop doing it. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, you gotta stay out from strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, only time I've seen a strip club was on t television, but just in real life, I've never been to one. Okay. But, you know, just, just, just you know what I'm saying? If your guys call you up and say, hey, we're going to the strip club, tell them, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. You know? What do you mean by Groves? When I, when I said the Northern Kingdom did the same thing. Uh huh. Yeah, Groves. They, they, they built Groves. Basically, and, and, and was worshiping idols. You know what I'm saying? They built groves in high places. It, it'll tell you about it in First Kings. Read the book of First Kings. It'll tell you about it. Because the Issachar tribe and the Issachar tribe and okay, Asher. Those are the Mexicans, and and, and Asher is the, um, the Col Colombian. Yeah, yeah, come, come, come. How they were doing the same thing the Egyptians do was. Right, 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 yeah, 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 come, come, come. Because the because the Egyptians what? They were idolatrous people. You know what I'm saying? They were sacrificing cats. You know what I'm saying? And, and all this stuff to Anubis. What, 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 ain't, ain't Anubis the, the nigga with the dog head? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, so, so whatever they done picked up when they was in Egypt, when they got over here, they started doing, that, doing the same thing. Right, 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 right. You know? So, what, what was you at, Oscar? It was uh, First Corinthians uh, 12 2. Right. So, it said that ye were Gentiles, right? So that means we had to become Gentiles. That's how you know Paul is talking to the Israelites. Okay? Give me Romans 10 and 6. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Uh huh. For Moses described it, uh, Slotkin. Uh, verse 6. But the righteousness, which is of faith, uh huh, speaketh on this wise. The righteousness of faith, right? So you gotta believe, right? Speaketh on what? On this wise. Uh huh. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Uh huh. Go ahead. That is to bring Christ down from above. Uh huh. Go ahead. Verse seven. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up. 
to bring up Christ again from the dead. So these are basically rhetorical questions. We know only the Most High, you know what I'm saying, can bring Christ from above and can raise him from the dead. He already arose, you know what I'm saying, and he already came, man, to do what? To buy back Israel, man, redeem Israel, okay? Redeem means to buy back, right? Wow. So in the New Testament, it talks about these people being redeemed. How in the hell is the other nations going to be redeemed, be bought back, when they was never a part of this covenant in the first place, man? Okay? You, you, you can't be redeemed into something you were never a part of, right? So what we're, what we're preaching is what? The good news is what? That the Israelites will be brought back as the top nation on the earth. Our oppressors are going into slavery. We're going to rule over them for, for, for a thousand years with Christ. You know, so basically, it's good news for us and bad news for everybody else. Okay? That's, that's really what the gospel is. People always talk about being light to the Gentiles. Well, if you go into Isaiah, I think that's what, 66 or 65? That's basically telling you that we were. That's basically telling you how we are going to have the other nations into subjection unto us, and they're going to bring us all their goods. Okay. So, uh, and and they like to say too that uh, all nations will be blessed through Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. Are all nations not blessed right now? They are all for us? Extremely blessed. You know, off the black, Latin, and Native Americans, man. Without us, America would be nothing. True. We built this place. True. We made great. You know? Yeah, right. We <laughs> made America great and not for ourselves. Right? But that's in the curses, ain't it? Don't it say that, uh, basically, um, and I'm paraphrasing, it, it, it says within the curses that basically we will work and not enjoy the fruit of our labor. You know what I'm saying? You work for the white man. Nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Twelve, twelve hours shift. 12, 12 hour shifts and then you gotta pay taxes and give your money right back to your oppressor, right? Yeah. And if you don't, they wanna come lock you up. Oh, you didn't pay your taxes, right? Uh, you know? Who was you at? I was, uh, Romans 10-6. Oh, Romans 10 I'm out. All right, show the one, huh? All right. Show the one. Same here. Let me tell you something. Uh, no, matter of fact, you got that already. Um, yeah, so that was the whole thing that, you know what I'm saying, was being preached unto Israel, man. When Christ came and brought the 12 and started his ministry, it was all about the redemption of what? The redemption of Israel. That's what was being preached, the, re the redemption of the Israelites, nobody else. Christ even said himself that I'm only sent into the, into the house of Israel, okay? People like to just skip over that, you know? Oh, well, I'm talking about spiritual Israelites. Nowhere in the Bible is it talking about a spiritual Israelite, okay? You cannot be a spiritual Israelite, just like I can't be a spiritual Greek, okay? Israelite is a bloodline, man, all right? So the only spiritual Israelite is an Israelite in the spirit, so you can understand. That's right. All right? Give me, um, give me Deuteronomy 32 and 8. The Most High is pro-Israel, man. That's why we're pro-Israel. People like to sit up and say, oh, they want to put us on hate group lists and all this other stuff, and that's fine, man. I do hate the other nations. So the hell what? The most I hate them. Am I not supposed to hate the bad and love the good? Yeah. Come on, man. Let's get that. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Deuteronomy 32 verse 8. Three. When the most high divided the nations. When the most high did what? Divided the nations. He divided the nations, man. He's a separatist. I told you this earlier. Now it's being proven. Read. Their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. He separated the sons of Adam. Who are the sons of Adam? All the, all the nations. Do not all let all the nations come from Adam. Yeah. Right? Read. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. According to the number of, of, of us, man. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 9. No, 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 verse 9. Give me Amos 3 and 1. Got it. So what? The Most High is pro-Israelites. He's a separatist. Okay? He's even a racist. We can see that in Deuteronomy 7 and 6. He called us the greatest people. That's right. Oh, above everybody else. Is that not racist as hell? Are you, are, are you going to, you know what I'm saying, say that God is wrong for being a racist? So you can't tell me I'm wrong for loving my own damn people. Okay? 
can't tell me I'm wrong for telling the, the blacks, Latins, and Native Americans that they are the, the most treasured people on planet Earth, okay? Ain't nobody else gonna tell them, right? Go ahead. Amos, three and one. Uh-huh. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel. O children of who? O children of Israel. Read. Against the whole family. Against the whole family, all 12 tribes, man. Okay? Read. Which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Which say. He, which he brought up from the land of Egypt, right? Does that say anything about the mixed multitude? Not, uh, not a damn thing. Go ahead. You only have I known. You only have I known, right? Read. Of all the families of the earth. Uh huh. Therefore, will I punish you. Will I punish you, read. For all your iniquities. For all your iniquities. Drop that. Get back to Romans uh, 10 and 8. So, as we can see, from, from, from Genesis to Revelation, the Most High's program don't change. He was always, he was, he was dealing with Israel in the beginning. He's dealing with Israel now, uh, you know what I'm saying, in, in the end, man. Okay, from beginning to end, it's fubu. For us, by us. Okay, this book is for us, by us, man. We read it. <laughs> It's about us. It's our history, man. Okay? And the Most High is our God. We're His people. Okay? People don't want to hear that. Tell yeah, I know they, they don't want to hear it, but guess what? I don't give a damn. They need it. You know, it. even Israelites don't want to hear it. Yeah, I, I know. And you know what? If they don't get right, I mean, Lord willing, they get right. But if not, hey, man, they can stick they, they, they legs, but they can stick their head between their legs and kiss their ass goodbye, man. Okay? They're going to be at that two-thirds. They got to be, hey, man. You know, sometimes you just got to tell a brother, hey, man, you're going to be my kid one day, man. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, Lord willing, we be of, that, of the men that make, you know. Go ahead. Uh, Romans 10 and 8. Uh -huh. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth mm -hmm. and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That's the word of faith we preach. Who is the word? Yahweh Shai, right? And, and we're going to preach what he preached. We're going to teach what he taught, right? And that's the redemption of Israel, man. That's what the whole ministry was set up for. What did he say? Go find the lost sheep of Israel. If you love me, what? Feed my flock. Who is this flock? The Israelites. You blacks, Latins, and Native Americans, man. And that's what we come out here to these streets to do, man. Okay? We're not going to be sitting up in no church. You know what I'm saying? This is what I never understood about church, right? Everybody in there is supposedly holier than thou. Right. Why in the hell do I got to preach to y'all if y'all doing what the hell y'all supposed to be doing? What about the brothers and sisters out on the streets that don't know this knowledge, that don't know this truth? What about them? What to hell with them? Right? They get word and mouth. They ain't paying tithes. Right, they're not paying tithes. That's all they're worried about. Now, the church also teaches that the law is done away with, but they want you to pay your tithes. Where do we find the law of tithes at? In the Old Testament. In that law that they say is done away with. That don't make no damn sense, man. You know, the, the, the law only matters when it comes down to your pockets, though. Yeah. Right? But when it comes down to you, you, you tell Pastor Johnson, hey, man, that woman married, man, you shouldn't be looking up a skirt. I saw you. You know, you, you, you just committed adultery, bro. Like, you, you, you was thinking about hitting that from the back. Yeah, I saw you, brother. Oh, oh no, nah, brother. You know, that, that's, that, that's that Old Testament stuff, brother. Wicked as hell, man. Go ahead. I had a, uh, I was talking to this elder yesterday who said that we're not supposed to wear fringes. We're not supposed to wear fringes. Where is that in the Bible? I heard that too. <laughs> Where is he that in the Bible? He said that the fringes is in our, is the, in fr our the fringes is in your mind, right? That, that's not what I heard. But, uh, what I heard was, uh, our definition Oh, spirit, of, spiritual fringes, huh? Our definition or idea of what a fringe is is wrong. Right, well, we, I mean, I mean, all we got to do is go into the etymology. That's another thing. A lot of these people don't go into the Hebrew. They don't even go into the Hebrew. They don't go into the Hebrew. They don't go into the Greek. How are you going to understand the scriptures if you don't realize and go into, you know what I'm saying, the original language that it was written in? You can't be going off English because a lot of English words got 12 different, know what I'm saying, definitions for one word. So we got to, so we got to deal with context, you know? Let me, uh, Give me uh, Romans 10 and 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Uh huh. For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth uh -huh. the Lord 
Jesus and shall believe in thine heart. Confess your how shall and believe in your heart, right? Read. That God hath raised him from the dead. That God hath raised him from the dead. Read. Thou shalt be saved. That's how you're going to be saved, man. Through you believing in your how shall and you keeping, you know what I'm saying, the works, right? So that's that faith and that works that you need to have. Read the next verse. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Read. And with the mouth confess, confession is made unto salvation. So you hear it, then you start to teach it, right? Read. Uh, verse 11. Uh, no. We need to go into what salvation is, right? Because people say, oh, salvation is open up to the whole world. The whole world don't need salvation. The world of Israel needs salvation, but not the whole world. Give me Luke uh, 1 and 7. Let's see what the definition of salvation is in the Bible. Okay. Hey, that brother got a deep start. <laughs> 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 Chapter 1, verse 7. Uh huh. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. As he spake by the mouth of the prophets, right? The prophets are found in the Old Testament, right? But we're reading in Luke, right? Read. Which have been since the world began. Which have been since the world began. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we shall be saved from our enemies. You blacks, Latins, and Native Americans. Right? Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. Uh-huh. And from the hand of all that hate us. So what is salvation? Us being saved from our enemies. Right? These other nations don't, don't what enemies do they have? They're in their heaven. We're in our hell. Right? They live off us. Okay? They make their money off us. What verse is that? That was Luke 1 and 7, Luke 71. The biblical definition of salvation is to be saved from your enemies, you know? And you blacks, Latins, and Native Americans are the only, y'all are in the worst shape that I've ever seen, man. Okay, y'all are the only ones that need to be saved. I don't need, the most I don't need to save the, the Japanese man, the Chinese man, the Arab man. They're doing just fine. They're right there in the gas station right now making money off us, selling us cigarettes and pork, okay? When in their, even in their own religion, they ain't even supposed to be dealing with no damn poor. But they're selling to you, yeah. right? Yeah. So what the hell I give a damn about them for, man? Why should I? Right? Uh, you you could you, you could walk through, bro. Okay. No problem. No problem. Give me Romans ten and eleven. Romans chapter ten verse eleven. Uh huh. For the scripture saith. Whosoever believeth on him, whosoever believeth on him, that whosoever is the Israelites, read, shall not be ashamed. Shall not be ashamed. Give me 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Why is there no difference between the Jews and the Greek? Because they're both Israelites, man. The only difference is one knows he's an Israelite and is calling himself an Israelite, and the other one doesn't. Okay? The same way how when brothers walk up and down the street, we tell them, you're an Israelite. They tell us, I'm an African American. Yeah. We're still the same damn people, right? Yeah. Now, this is what people need to understand, right? Now, watch this. Give me Exodus 11 and 7. Give me Exodus 11 and 7. Now, remember what it said. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, right? If it was actually, if this was actually talking about an Israelite and a heathen, it would say it was a difference between them. And I'm going to show you how. Give me that in Exodus. Exodus 11 and 7. Exodus 11 and 7. Read. But against any of the children of Israel uh -huh. shall not a dog move his tongue. Shall not a dog move his tongue. Read. Against man or beast. Uh -huh. That ye may know how that Yahweh 
does put a difference. He put a what? A difference. A difference between what? Between the Egyptians and Israel. Between the Egyptians and Israel. Now, when we get to the New Testament, it says there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. That's how it's letting you know that these are the same people. That's why it's no difference. One is just calling himself a Greek. The other one just knows he's an Israelite. Just like we got, just like we got, we got, we got brothers out here right now in that comedic spirit. You know what I'm saying? Following after the commissions, right? But are they not still our people? They are. You know, there's still no difference between me and that brother outside of I'm not ignorant to who I am. He is. You know, he's still on this journey, and Lord willing, you know what I'm saying? He he come over to this side. You know. But that's what we out here to do, man. We out here to do what the prophets did. They spoke to Israel. We out to do what, you know what I'm saying, the disciples did. They spoke to Israel, right? On the highways and byways, and even in temples and synagogues, man. But we don't have a temple right now, right? We're the temple that's being built up in Babylon, in Mystery Babylon, man. Okay? That's it on that? Yeah, that's it on that. Um, that was the exit. But there is no difference, read. Between the Jew and the Greek. Between the Jew and the Greek, because they're both Israelites, read. For the same Lord over all uh -huh. is rich unto all mm -hmm. that call upon him. They call upon him, right? Who, who needs to know, who needs to be calling upon the Lamb of the Lord? The Israelites, right? And only the Israelites. Give me uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 22. Chapter 8, verse 22. And this is to bring out the point. This is Solomon praying, right? And Solomon's only praying for Israelites. He's only praying for the Israelites, man. Okay? So as you can see, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, nothing changes. It's all about Israel. Read that. And Solomon stood before the altar uh -huh. of Yahweh. Go ahead. In the presence of all the congregation Read of on. Israel. Read on and spread forth his hand toward heaven. Uh-huh, go ahead. And he said, Yahweh, power of Israel. Power of Israel, not power of the Egyptians, not power of the Greeks, not power of the Romans. Power of Israel, go ahead. There is no God like thee uh -huh. in heaven above or on earth beneath. Uh -huh. Who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee. Who are thy servants? Who did he make the covenant with? The Israelites. Okay? It's only it's only one covenant that somebody can say he made with the whole world. And that's the, that he wouldn't flood the earth again. And that's where you get the rainbow from. Okay? And that covenant is not just made with people. That's made to dogs. That's made to cats. It, 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 any inhabitant of the world. You know? But other than that, you, you, you ain't took a part of no other covenant, man. Okay? It's only the Israelites. Okay? Unless you're talking about you know, the promise that he wouldn't flood the world again, okay, with water. But he is going to flood this joint with nuclear missiles, okay? The lake of fire is coming, so you niggas better get right. Go ahead. With, uh, who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee uh -huh. with all their heart. And the servants are the Israelites. Go ahead. Who has kept thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, thou speakest also with thy mouth. And David is what? David's an Israelite. Go ahead. And hath fulfilled it with thine hand, as in this day. Uh, therefore now, Yahweh of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, saying, there shall not fail thee a man in thy in my sight uh -huh. to sit on the throne of Israel. All right, skip down to uh, 33 so we get the point. Verse 33. When thy 
people, Israel, when thy people who? Israel, uh -huh. be smitten down before the enemy. Be smitten down before the enemy. How was we smitten down before the enemy? Why do we have to get smitten down before the enemy? Because we left the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? That's how you became a Greek. That's how you became a Roman. That's how you became a Colossian within that within the so-called New Testament. Okay? That's how you became an Israelite in a Gentile state of mind. Right? Go ahead. Because they have sinned against thee. Because we sinned against the Most High, he had to send another nation to get us right, man. He uses, he, the Most High uses nations to judge nations, right? Just like we're, you know what I'm saying, going to judge our oppressors, okay? Right? What did, what did the scripture say? Uh, Assyria is my rod. Assyria is a people, okay? Just like he used the, chiefly the Edomites, you know what I'm saying, to be our enemies, okay? That's who we receive most of our judgment from. Right? Okay? Which is all ordained by the Most High. But it's also going to be, you know what I'm saying, the same, uh, it's also going to be ordained by the Most High when we put their asses in chains. Okay? So you can understand. Three. And shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, uh -huh. and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. Uh-huh. In this house? What's that house? Israel, the house of Israel, man. Go ahead. 34. 34. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel. Forgive the sin of thy people Israel. What was what were the disciples teaching? What was Paul out teaching? Repentance, man. Repentance. How is any other nation gonna repent if they never was given the law in the first place? Okay? You wacky tacky Christians are out of your damn mind, man, and y'all don't have a leg to stand on, man. Okay? With anybody that actually reads the Bible. Three. And bring them again into the land. And bring them what? Bring them again, right? So that means if they're if he's bringing us back to the land, that means we were already in the land. It says again, right? Huh. Was it anybody else in the land of Israel dwelling with us? It was our land. We drove the Canaanites out. Now, it was a couple of Canaanites, you know what I'm saying, that, still, that, that, that were still scattered around. But the land of Canaan was given unto who? The Israelites, right? Matter of fact, it's been a couple of times in history that we were supposed to go, we was told to go kill a whole, uh, 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 we were supposed to go slaughter a whole nation, man. But Saul didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? You know, he wanted to, he wanted to kill the people but keep the spoils to himself. Most I said don't take nothing. God loves everybody. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, man. God loves everybody of Israel. Okay? All right, give me Romans 10, 13. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Uh-huh. For whosoever shall call upon... For whosoever shall call upon what? The name of Yahweh. The name of the Most High, right? Shall be saved. That's who's going to be saved. Now let me just get one more scripture, and then we're gonna close out. Let, let, let me get something right quick because what people that in? people people will say Romans, get, get, Romans ten thirteen. Re, Romans ten thirteen. Man, I got a question about that real quick. All right, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. One second, because the camera's gonna cut off. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna show y'all something. I'm gonna show y'all that only the Most High's name was given to Israel, man. So it can't be talking about nobody else. Give me Second Ezra, the thirty fourth chapter, and we're gonna read thirty six. We're gonna close out with that. Try to get it quick too. Say whosoever shall call upon the name, right? The scriptures also tell you that the name is dreadful among the heathen. Oh, I know. Right? They don't know the name of the most high. The most high's name wasn't given unto them. Okay? We read that in the New Testament, right? In the New Testament where it says whosoever shall call upon the name, right? We're gonna show you they can only be talking about Israel. Is it 2nd Ezra's what? 2nd Ezra's 3 and 34. Get it up, get it up, get it up. 2nd uh, Ezra's chapter 3. You know what? I got it right here. I, I'm going I'm to read it. 2nd Ezra's 3 and 34. Weigh there, therefore, our wickedness, now in the balance. That's talking about the wickedness of the Israelites. And theirs also that dwell the world. And so shall thy name 
nowhere be found but in Israel. Okay? Verse verse 35. Yeah, that's a cut, ain't it? Verse 35. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Who were the commandments given to? The Israelites. Verse 36. Thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts, not the heathen. Nowhere in the New Testament is he going to any heathen, man. He's going to Israelites that are either in a heathen state of mind, man. Okay? And you need to understand that. That's in the Apocrypha. I, I give it to you, you know what I'm saying, when, when we get off camera. But with that, we want to give Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. The walk, take us out. All right. Once they Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And death to America! Death to America!